Thanks to it recently having been featured in a movie, Thay is top of mind for a lot of D&D and Forgotten Realms fans alike. I am Ivan with Many Realms, and in this Realms Lore video, Ed Greenwood is going to share with us all about a very particular and a very interesting Thayan expat merchant that quite probably has the upper hand on you and the rest of your party. If you're enjoying these Realms Lore videos, be sure to show your support for Ed by liking, subscribing, hitting the bell icon so you never miss a video, and, you know, share the video around to a GM or a player that you love. And don't forget to check out Ed's shop where you can get your hands on some super swanky new adventuring gear. I'll leave a link to that down in the description. To many folk of Faroon, Thay is an evil, slave-taking land of undead and ruthless, bald, tattooed red wizards who are ruled by liches with Zast Ham the Undying as the insane supreme leader of them all. And if he has his way, the overlord of an ever-expanding empire that will one day swallow all the known realms. Say is magically mighty, large and wealthy, and lies at the eastern end of the Sea of Fallen Stars. Before the Spell Plague, Say established trading outposts in many important cities across Faroon, small areas where Thay and Law held sway, and from them sought to sell spells, spell scrolls, and minor items of daily useful magic, such as drift globes, you know, those things that light up spaces and can be made to move around. After the spell plague, these outposts were left to fend for themselves, and many dwindled or were sold off or abandoned. Most of these outposts had a sinister local reputation, rife with rumors of illegal activities such as smuggling, slave-taking, and poison-selling. Merchants and wizards, among others, know a little little bit more that something in Thay aids magic. More folk have the gift of wielding the art, or arcane magic that is, than elsewhere. That the Red Wizards have Zulkirs for each school of arcane magic. That the land is divided into Tharches, districts governed by Tharchions. And that Thay has tried to invade and conquer Mulhorand, Unser, and Aglarond many times only to ultimately fail. A few such individuals may have heard more that there are rebel red wizards outside Thay who stand against Zastam's rule and work against him and his policies, hoping to one day destroy him and take Thay in different directions under their rule. However, many folk across Faroon have met, traded with, traveled with, or even worked with Thayan merchants, they may not know they have, be for by no means all Thayans wear red robes, or shave their heads, or have skin of certain hues, or advertise what country they hail from. Thayans all know the reputation Thay enjoys among outlanders. Moreover, there's a widespread and persistent belief that any Thayan outside Thay is a spy for Thay, who should be fooled at every opportunity, harassed or thwarted whenever practically possible, and harmed, driven out, or even slain when the right opportunity arises. The truth? A few Thayans abroad are spies, but the vast majority are not. However, thousands of Thayan merchants, known as Thayan or not, travel and trade in many lands, and they are of all ages, looks, genders, and fields of interest and expertise. There is no stereotypical merchant beyond a tendency among Thayans who feel the cold and damp or the beating sun to wear ankle-length garments that hang from the shoulders and some sort of hat. One of these traveling Thayans who spends much of her time traversing the Heartland's trade routes from Waterdeep and Silvery Moon via Scornubel through Cormir in the Dales to Telflam and Thesk though rarely home to Thay itself. Warehouses in Telflam and Thesk tend to be the closest she gets by choice, is Aurora Rosar. The name is an assumed one. Elements borrowed separately from two Sembian families she has no blood relation to at all, for she is the daughter of a high-ranking male officer in the Probity Corps and a powerful female Red Wizard who doesn't want her parentage known by fellow Thaeans 
or outlanders for fear of trouble, not just suspicion that would hamper her trading. Aurora Rosar is no trained wizard, but she has the gift as what some call a well talent and others term untrained sorceress. If you're enjoying this video, please like it, leave me a like, subscribe, and if you want to be notified whenever I've got a new video, please hit the bell icon. And if you want a steady stream of Realms Lore, join my Patreon, Ed Greenwood on Patreon, and consider becoming a protector of the realms. I'd love it. Your support makes these videos impossible. She keeps her magical abilities as secret as possible, resorting to them only in dire emergencies and seeking to pass them off when use them she must as the results of employing her small, precious, and hidden collection of personal, portable magic items. Arera Rosar is agile, a good climber, and deft at catching items and manipulating, as well as moving quietly. She might well make a good sneak thief. She has avoided such tendencies, but over the years trained herself to be a very good appraiser, cutter, polisher, and remounter of gemstones, as well as a practical expert in the ever-changing Sword Coast sources of raw metal and gem ores, who's smelting ingots of what and what trends and prices are prevailing in the markets for such goods. She knows most forge marks and official mint marks at a glance, can judge weight very well by simple hefting of what she can lift, and is a calm, clear-headed negotiator. By now, she has contacts both above board and shady in most cities along the Heartland's trade routes. Firm working agreements with traders in Scordobel and Desir, and ongoing rivalries with certain traders in Uriabur and Westgate. Unusually among humans, but not unusually among successful merchants above the level of fixed location shopkeepers, Arir Rosar embraces change and sees it as inevitable to be written and used rather than resisted or railed against. So she's constantly seeking new goods to trade in rather than sticking to gems, finished jewelry, and metals, which in turn means she can be found just about anywhere, quietly dealing in just about anything. Whenever doing so will avoid taxes or fees, she barters goods for goods rather than buying and selling the most dangerous, but also the most profitable wares she handles tend to be jewelry, which may or may not be stolen, and magic. In common with most flourishing merchants, Arera will trade with anyone. Station, species, age, and gender all matter to the specifics of a deal, but not to prevent dealing. Arera Rosar is a slender, middle-aged woman of ash blonde hair, habitually worn short, brown eyes, a pleasant and pretty but not strikingly beautiful face, and a low-pitched, usually quiet voice. She has the knack of fading into the background and arriving or departing unnoticed, drifting in and out rooms or areas without attracting attention. And she's acutely aware of when someone else or something forms a view block for a particular observer, so she'll drift behind someone then use that cover to casually move to where furniture or a wall blocks someone noticing she's leaving. She is calm, looks ahead with trends and to future achievements, and is entirely lacking in pride, as well as entirely lacking in shame and modesty. She's pragmatic, very slow to anger, which she views as a weakness to be exploited in others when dealing with them. Pride and lust are other such weaknesses, so she'll avoid indulging in them herself whenever making deals. Arera knows she has nondescript looks and often dresses to match, that is, blend with others she's with or who will be present in a locale where she wants to make deals. She's not above acting naive or ignorant of trading details to try to learn someone else's attitudes, wants, and trade positions, or to close deals. She is patient, playing the long game as a merchant to make small profits here, there, and everywhere, rather than trying to win it all in a hurry. 
particularly when swift gains will mean danger and being noticed by individuals who could well become dangerous enemies. She's always thinking several steps ahead. If she's trying to acquire cast iron ring bolts, she will already have an idea of who and where she'll sell them to or barter them with and for what. A rare Rosar acts as a trading agent for several merchants in Nethjet, notably Norold Iorikbrek and Sir Last Soldrar, but increasingly has as little to do with Say as possible. She's been covertly buying homes and shops in Selgot, Suzale, and Tezir for some time and cultivating trading relationships with merchants of Alm, Tether, and Waterdeep. When travel makes her back and these ache a little more, it will be time to change her name again, sell off her properties, find a wealthy man to marry somewhere stable and warm, and retire to a new life. Though she doesn't think she'll ever truly be done making deals. This is a two-part video, so be sure to check that out. In part two, I ask Ed a whole series of questions to hammer down some of the details and help flesh out this particular character, getting them ready to be deployed in your next game. Welcome back to Realm Speak. And today, we are doing this fellow, a demon lord, and the patron of frost giants. And it is a weird spelled name with two no less than two correct pronunciation. You can say cast G, which usually goes fast. So cast G, or, or you can say Koschichi or Koschichi. So most of the time, if you come across a common speaker, like say a human merchant, who may not actually worship this demon lord, but must tell you it'll be Koschichi. That's the pronunciation they will jump on. But Gastchi, Gastchi is also correct and may more often be used by, say, Frost Giants. There you go. 